Back when I was coming up and learning how to play bass, a bass amp was just such an incredible thing to have because everybody had them. Everybody had massive bass amps. And now I feel like we're kind of losing that a little bit. And a big reason why is because of pedals like this or DIs like this or DIs like this right here. They have kind of made it a little harder on people spending money on amps because they can get a great sound or even better sound than most amps with just a pedal that you can fit in your bag or your backpack. The big difference when it comes to amps nowadays is that they could do tons more than what they could back whenever I was first learning how to play bass. And honestly, if you spent a lot of money on a really good bass amp, you probably wouldn't even have to have these unless you're doing a lot of fly dates. So today we're gonna be exploring a lot of the features that these type of bass amps share and have to see if they're actually still relevant. So today we're gonna be going through my amp, which is a GK Fusion 112. It is one of their new line of amps, combo amps that they just released here in the past, you know, little bit. And my gosh, I'm not trying to, you know, sell you on this or anything. I'm just telling you, me personally, this is the best amp I've ever owned. When I go and play most times, especially when I'm flying, I use my API transformer because it's a it's a DI and it's a, a EQ and a you know compressor and preamp everything. But what's so cool nowadays is that these amps sound just as good as a pedal. Now I will say I love my pedal. That's the reason why I still use it and I'm still going to use it. But the thing is, is that I honestly love the sound of this amp direct. That's not to say that I'm gonna stop using my API. I'm still gonna be using my API, but I will say that if you really get a nice amp that really works, it sounds really great for what you play, you don't have to spend a ton of money on the DI just to go direct into a sound system. So just for an example, I recorded an Instagram reel the other day and I used this as my preamp and didn't use a pedal or anything, just straight from my amp to my interface. And this is what it sounded like. Now, something that I had an issue with whenever I first got my first amp was that it was hard to figure out a way to play music through my amp so I can practice and play at the same time. And nowadays, new amps like this one and just like different amps have a way where you can plug in an aux connection to where you can play your music through your phone and through your amp and then also hook up your headphones to it so you can hear the music, and your bass. Another thing about amps that were kind of making them a little irrelevant as well is that they were so huge. They were such a big, big thing to carry with you. Now they have made ones like this one. My Fusion is a 112, so it's a 112 inch speaker. So 12 inch speaker is actually not that huge, but what is crazy is that I take, I've taken this on tours, I've taken this on like rehearsals when we're in a big stage room. Dude, it fills up a room. I didn't even need much more than this for just like a normal stage. And I wasn't even all the way up. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like loud. You don't have to have a massive cabinet to have a massive sound. So what's really cool about amps nowadays, especially if it's like the professional or kind of a little bit more high quality, you can push power from one, your combo amp to power another amp that's like the same size or even you know a bigger cabinet if you want some more low end. Now I've done this at church before and it's actually really, really fun to do. So you should check and see if your amp can do this as well because it's not just this amp, but other amps can do this as well, especially if it's like a mid tier to like higher tier amp, you should be able to power other speakers from it. Also with amps like this guy and like kind of Aguilar amps and some others, you can stack these and kind of make a bigger cabinet. So say you're like, man, this is really expensive, which I'm just gonna 
just straight out say it. This is not a cheap amp, but you can buy one of these and then save up for, you know, to get another one and stack it on top and get yourself a 212 just by buying a second one. And then if you want to buy another one, you could buy a 115 or something like that. You can just stack them and use them together to create the biggest amp that you want to. The reason why stacking is cool is because if I'm on a little gig or something like that, I could just take this one. But if I'm on like a big touring gig and I have a bus and we have all this equipment, I can take three, four of these with me and have like a really big amp if I want to. And that's the one thing about bigger amps is that you're kind of committed to the size of it. So nowadays having something that's a little bit smaller that you can stack kind of lets you have more versatility in what type of gigs you can use it with. Now, one thing that bass amps have now that they definitely did not have years ago are effects built into the amp. Now y'all know me, I'm not like a huge person when it comes to having like these big pedal boards of a bunch of different effects that you take everywhere just like a guitar player. But I usually say that there's three or four effects that you should have in your arsenal, which is a good preamp pedal, a good compressor, a tuner pedal, and a overdrive or distortion pedal. But nowadays with some of these newer amps, they have these effects already built into them. Now, my particular amp doesn't have a bunch of effects but it just has an essential one, which is an overdrive. And that's really awesome for me because I really don't wanna to have to always bring an overdrive. And the fact that I could just hit a button, which on this amp, it has a foot switch where you can just click it on and activate the overdrive, click it off whenever you're ready. And you don't have to necessarily put it in your pedal board. And to be honest, I really haven't been a huge fan of effects on amps, but overdrive is something I could live with. But when it comes to like compression and all these kind of filters and stuff like that. I'm like, ah, that's just my opinion. But the overdrive in here sounds great. To give you an example, here's what the overdrive on my amp sounds like. So I started off this video with the question, are bass amps still relevant? And I will tell you this, there are some aspects where I can see you don't need a bass amp, but for me being kind of a purist at heart and then also just being a bass player that loves to feel the bass, I feel like they are still relevant. Let me know in the comments, do you think bass amps are still relevant? or do you think that they're coming to a close? Please let me know in the comments because I want to hear what you guys have to say. So now if you guys are interested in getting an amp like mine, feel free to check the description. I'll have a link to this exact amp, but I will warn you, it is a little bit pricey, but it's a very good quality amp that I'm probably going to have forever. But if you're looking for something that's more of a beginner practice amp that's like $100, $200 or less, I'll drop one in the description as well so you can check it out. So if you guys like this video, feel free to check out some more of my videos where I teach you how to use some more equipment on your base.